Hey everyone, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we are going to recap the MC1911C from Gerson. If you're not familiar with this, this is a single stack 9mm 1911 in a commander's size. So a little bit smaller than that government model. And again, this is going to be chambered in 9mm. Now I've had high hopes for this pistol because I have a huge love for 1911s. It was one of the first pistols I ever shot as a kid, so I've always had a profound um, love for the 1911 platform, regardless of what it's chambered in, just because of my, um, you know, just my history and, and all the nostalgia behind it and all of that jazz. So with that being said, when I got my hands on one of these, I was really excited for a 9mm 1911 because of all of the great things that these types of pistols have going for it. But since I've had it, I've had issues. We're going to talk about all of that. And I've also had two other videos that you guys might want to be interested in taking a look at. We'll have cards at that at the end of the video. However, before we go any further, I need to say a special thank you to this video sponsor, and that is Ballistic Inc. That is the merch store that I'm going through for all of my t-shirts and hats. So if you guys are interested in financially supporting the channel, that's a great way because not only are you supporting the channel, but you're also getting something out of it as well. This is my grenade uh, t-shirt. I also have a spam can and a AK bolt face for you guys to choose from. And if those aren't what you like, they have a whole bunch of other different designs as well as a number of other content creators on the platform as well. So swing on by and either support me or some of the other YouTubers that are out there, I would greatly appreciate it. If that's just not your thing, you're not interested in t-shirts or whatever, another great way to support the channel is to share this video. If you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate you guys considering doing so. Like and commenting down below is also a great way. And my question to you guys is, what do you think of the 1911 chambered in nine millimeter? I really like that idea. It's easy to mitigate the recoil on a 1911, especially with something as robust as this type of pistol. So I have high hopes for nine millimeter 1911s, but unfortunately, like I said, I've ran into some issues with this. So just to recap what's going on, first 500 rounds, I was having a failure to eject issue almost every single magazine. Not necessarily every single one, but I would have a couple of magazines where nothing would happen, and then I'd have a magazine where it would mess up. Failure to eject, stove piping in the horizontal position, and then um, I'd run a couple more magazines, no problem. Then I'd have a magazine where I'd have two or three issues in the same magazine. So I'm saying about every single magazine. Sent it into EAA and had them take a look at it. They replaced the extractor and ran 50 rounds through it. They said they had no issues. Sent it back to me. I continued to have problems. Now, I will say that those problems were not as frequent as they were before, but still was having issues. So I sent it in to them a second time and they did some more work on it, um, tuned the ejector, uh, or excuse me, tuned the extractor and did a little bit more cleaning up of the pistol, sent it back to me, and I have now ran another 300 rounds through this pistol. And that's where I want to talk about what has happened since then. EAA did put 100 rounds through this using five different people to expend those 500 rounds to ensure that it wasn't just one, one person's problem, that multiple different people were trying it and didn't have any issues. So um, good on them for doing that. I really do appreciate that. Another great thing that they did through their warranty service was the fact that they sent a piece of paper explaining exactly what they did as well. So I do appreciate EAA for doing that. Uh, since I've got it back, a buddy of mine, Hefe, uh, he's kind of my gym partner, training coach, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I lent this pistol to him. He put 100 rounds through it and he had one or uh, no, he had two failures to eject on this out of the 100 rounds. Since then, I've put 200 rounds through it and I've had one issue since then. So 300 rounds, we've had three issues. I'm going to call that a win because of how many issues I had prior to that. So good on EAA for working through this. Now, 
in my previous video, a lot of you guys have uh, offered your thoughts as to what is going on and what I should do to fix this, and I really do appreciate that. Thank you guys for those comments. However, I wanted to allow EAA to do their work on this to ensure that uh, I was allowing them to make whatever changes they need to do, um, make sure they are aware of the problem, so maybe they can, you know, send that information back to Turkey with Gerson and uh, allow them to have that information for QA, 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 QC purposes, and so on and so forth. So I really wanted EAA to work the issues out before I started tinkering it with uh, myself. All right, so let's wrap up with what are my thoughts with this particular pistol and Gerson as a whole. I don't think I'm necessarily prepared to say that Gerson is a good or bad manufacturer um, because I've only had experience with this one pistol. However, I have seen a lot of people sing Gerson's praises that they've had no issues regardless if it was the 45 or the 9mm. Chris from Honest Outlaw, he's had no issues with this. Uh, exact same pistol as well. I've been in contact with him and showed him videos of the issues that I've had and he's like, yeah, that's really weird. I don't have any problems whatsoever. And he's been running 115 grain rounds through it the entire time. Straight out of the box, no cleaning, none of that. Just pick it up and start shooting. And I think he may have had one issue, but that was, that was definitely a ammunition issue. So I have to take all of that into consideration as well. The other aspect is Gerson is making a really cool high power clone that I would like to try as well and let you guys see my feedback on that particular pistol. They've got a couple of different variations and there's one that I'm very interested in so I'd like to get my hands on that, run you know a few hundred, five, six, seven thousand rounds through it and uh, Give you guys my feedback and then at that point i think i might be a little bit in a better position for me to give you an opinion about gerson i will say that i am a little let down at the fact that this didn't run reliably from the get-go but i also understand 9 millimeter 1911s are a little finicky and i just may have a lemon however eaa stood by their warranty and allowed me to send it in more than once to try to get the problems fixed. So adding all of that together, would I recommend this to someone? Uh, I think I would based off of a lot of the other people's feedback and acknowledging that mine just may, may, be, a lemon, may be a lemon. However, I will also explain to them, hey, this is the issues that I've ran into. Uh, so take that as you will. And that's what I share with you guys. So um, I'd say definitely give Gerson a try. Their pistols are fairly inexpensive. So if uh, for some reason it's not working well for you, utilize their warranty claim system. And then um, if you get it back, it's still not working out, you know, trade it out for something else. But again, the value that you're getting out of this pistol, I think is one of the biggest pluses about it. But I can leave it to you guys. Sound off in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Should I think something else uh, of the Gerson MC 1911? Uh, have you had any experience? Uh, let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Again, thank you for all the supports. If you guys are interested in jumping in on a giveaway that I do every single month, swing on by fitandfire.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter and jump in on that as well as all the great deals that I'm providing you guys as well. In addition to that, on fitandfire.com, if you guys are interested in finding where I'm getting all of these great deals for the videos that I'm doing, check out the videos and products tab and it will link all of the third party uh, affiliation stuff with not only the video, but also the products as well. So swing on by, check all that stuff out. I really do appreciate it. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Take care guys. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.